Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, Battlefleet Gothic was a game produced by Games Workshop which ran from 1999 until 2013, at which point they finally stopped producing the plastic kits and the metal to support the game. But there is still a pretty vocal run of gamers out there, myself included, who remember and love this game. Now, even if some of its gaming systems are a little dated by today's standards, the game itself is still a lot of fun. And it is surprisingly easy to find proxies for these old miniatures, even if you can't find the originals anymore. Now, this one is a 3D print, and I will make sure to link to those in the description. But the actual painting here, this is inspired from the original Battlefleet Gothic box set. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now the first question that's going to come up is where can I get miniatures for a game that hasn't been produced since 2013? And the short answer for this is there's actually quite a few places. If you haven't got a 3D printer, then there are all sorts of alternative Battlefleet Gothic miniatures available through smaller companies. Um, I will put a couple of suggestions in the description, but if you Google Battlefleet Gothic alternative ships, you are going to get hundreds more, so don't worry that you're going to miss out just if you haven't got a printer. Now, if you do have a 3D printer, life becomes a little easier, and that's what this ship here is. And again, I will link to the files in the description. You can also go to Thingiverse, and there are a ton of really good uh, printable ships available there for free. So even if you don't want to spend any cash on STL files, Sure, you're going to have to support them yourself when it comes to printing them, but they, well, they're free. So we like free. Now, when it comes to which rule set you want to use, you could stick to Battlefleet Gothic. It's very easy to find that PDF available online. You could also look at games like Warfleet's FTL from One Page Rules. There's a billion suns over at Osprey. Uh, there are a bunch of alternatives. Full Thrust springs to mind. Uh, check out War Game Vault for ship, you know, staff ship combat games. You'll always have something to use with these miniatures. Even if you haven't got Battlefleet Gothic, well, that's not the sort of old school game that you like. Because with all the love in the world, it has dated a little bit these days. But with a little bit of information there to get you started looking for miniatures and rules, let's concentrate on the painting. Now I've begun by giving this guy a prime of Skeleton Bone from the Army Painter. And honestly, there are so many coloured primers out there that whether you want to stick to this scheme or you want to come up with something else, you're probably not going to struggle to find a coloured primer for your ships. And I thoroughly recommend pick one up if you're going to paint a few of these. Now I find it easiest to have a, a spray stick, essentially. Uh, I'm using the acrylic rod and bases from Litco. Um, you can also print your own or find others available, but these are available in a bunch of different sizes and Litco's prices are really good. So they're who I go with. Uh, this isn't glued in, so later on I'll be able to pop it off and replace it with a proper clear plastic rod. But for spraying and painting, it's pretty handy to have one that you don't mind getting a little gungy. So our first actual painting step is to grab some Cera from Sepia. I've given this a really good shake, and we're going to use a stiff bristled brush here. One of my little cheap uh, brushes from the stationery aisle, this is going to be ideal, because I can be quite vigorous with it, let's say. Rough if you want to be <laughs> a little less polite. But what I'm going to do is just start jamming this over the whole miniature. Now because there are so many nooks and crannies on this thing, this can be a little time consuming. And you do want to make sure that you really do work it in to the recesses. Because if you miss anything here, it's going to glow a little bit uh, once everything else is done. Now, Don't worry if you get any on the prow, which we are going to paint separately later. But for now, let's just go over the whole miniature with Seraphim Sepia. And then we're going to give it about, well, I'm going to say probably 30 to 40 minutes here. Um, it will take quite a while to dry because we're going kind of crazy with the shades. Now it's important that your shade is thoroughly dry because we're going to dry brush the miniature now with some Tyrant Skull. Now if any shade under this is still wet when we start doing this, you're going to lift it up and smear it everywhere, make a dreadful mess. So make sure you do give this plenty of time to dry before this stage. Now Tyrant Skull, you can be quite generous because really what I want to do is bring back that off-white bone sort of color. 
Uh, you could dry brush with any, you know, skeleton bone or a shabti bone or what have you. Just take your time when you come near the spires, you know, be gentle with them because they are resin. Uh, we're going to go around now the whole miniature and just give it a couple of passes of Tyrant Skull. And you'll see how that brightens everything up again. Now we're going to follow that up with a tiny dry brush of Rack White along some of the really conspicuous edges. You want to be much lighter with this, uh, but I think it introduces a little bit more depth to our figure. And I'm using Rack White rather than a pure white because this has got a very slightly sort of peachy complexion to it, which I think helps that look. Now there's our John Blanche Bone White done with a minimum of fuss and just a couple of dry brushes. It's really so simple to do. We'll move on now and pay some attention to the prow section. For this I've got my medium base brush and we're going to apply a couple of layers of Evil Sun Scarlet. Now this is crazy bright, it is going to look bonkers going on, but trust me. You see I'm not too fussed if I do hit the raised elements of the prow, we're going to paint these gold later. I just... I... The BFG ships, these are some of my favorite bits of 40k design. You know, so much of what has come afterwards, especially like terrain kits and similar, I think you see some of the uh, design language of these original ships. This, of course, being a, a reproduction, but I don't know, that flying cathedral thing is something which is so 40k, and uh, that madness of them really appeals. But anyhow, probably need a second coat of this. We'll come back once this is a nice solid red. And once you've got your nice solid red, switch to Retributor Armor and a slightly smaller brush. I'm using a Regiment brush here from the Army Painter, uh, though a medium layer brush would do the job as well. And we're going to apply probably just the one coat, but we'll see what happens, of Retributor Armor to the panels here. Now if you do slip and you end up putting a little into the red sections, don't worry. The reason why we've done the red first will be because it's far easier to clean that up if we make any mistakes. Now I did find it necessary to come back in a couple of spots just to tidy up that red, but after a couple of coats of gold, this is what you'll have. So I'm going to turn now to my Agrax Earthshade, and we're not actually going to use a huge amount of this. What we're using this for mostly is to introduce a bit of shading to the prow and to dull down that gold a little. So with just some of this on my brush, I'm just going to paint this over the prow. And anywhere that I get really dark recesses, I'll just move it away with my brush. So really I just want, there we go, that recess covered over all of the red. And make sure of course to do this to both sides. Now once that dries, you're going to end up with a nice shaded prow. Nice and simple. We might come back and highlight the gold later, but I'm undecided, really. <laughs> We're going to move on to some silver. Now for this, I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel, because I want quite a sharp and very definitely visible steel color. Uh, but you could use Lead Belcher or similar. What we're going to do is start picking out some of the weapon bays. Uh, so these... What do you call them? Gun mount thingamajiggers? I know these fire big guns. These are big guns. <laughs> the weapons battery, uh, parts of the lances. So I always like to do just the barrels on these things. Uh, we're also going to paint in the towers, so you can quite quickly whip a coat of this over the top of these. Uh, now the engines here on this particular model are quite different to how they appeared on the official miniatures. So it's up to you where you want to go with the silver. I'm going to concentrate more toward the rear, so they look a little more classic, uh, but that is up to you. And I'm going to pick out a few other details, so these prongy bits, anything which looks reminiscent of the artwork. Now, I always kind of think it's important to pick out your weapon details with something that'll stand out from the miniature. Uh, reason being, you're kind of, you're painting for recognition here. You should be able to look at the table and see straight away what your ship is armed with. It makes it much easier. That's one of the reasons I really like this colossal Nova Cannon on the front of this particular file. Um, it really does make it very obvious what's going on here. Now, how much of this ends up being silver is up to you. I do suggest things like these little bobbles and domes on the bridge section. They look pretty cool in silver. 
Um, but now we're going to shade roughly half of this. We're actually going to leave some of that silver without doing anything more to it. Now for the shade, I'm going to use Known Oil, and I'm actually using the gloss version here. Um, reason being, this will collect very slightly differently to normal gloss varnish, uh, not gloss varnish, Known Oil. I'm going to apply this over the Nova Cannon. The engine sections at the back here. And our towers in the midships. And then while those are drying, you can get a little bit of Stormhost Silver and just little slashes of this across weapon bays and we'll dot in some of these little bobbles on top of the bridge. You don't have to be terribly precise here, just enough to brighten them up a bit. Now there are really only a couple of details left here. So I've got some Liberated Gold and what I'm going to do is use the edge of my brush against the prow here. So rather than trying to paint with the tip, I'm just going to lightly drag the edge along this trim. Now once you've got that squared away, in the not strictly necessary but cool if you do look, these little bubbles down the side, I have here some aerial yellow, and I'm just going to tap those in to make them look like lights or something similar. Um, I've seen people do these in green and red on both sides, you know, for running lights. But the idea of not knowing which side was left and right on a ship of this size, even if it's coming towards you, uh, I don't know, I like the yellow. Now these engine sections down the back here, they blend in a little too much with the rest of the hull for my liking. So what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of Agrax Earthsheet again, and I'm going to go straight over the top of those. And once this is dried, mercifully, on a Battlefleet Gothic ship, there's ordinarily not a lot of basing work you have to do. So once this is done, I am going to give it a quick Munitorum Varnish. Because you're not going to want a perfect matte finish with these, I don't think. They look kind of cool if there's a little bit of gloss to them. And then we'll get a look at what this fella looks like when he is all finished. And there we have it. Our Lunar Class Cruiser is complete. And whether you're looking at third-party miniatures, or you're able to get your hands on some of the originals somewhere, if you're lucky enough to still be able to find some of these flying cathedrals, I really love the look. The 40k design for spaceships is just... So insane, you have to love it. Now the painting itself is actually, well I wouldn't say deceptively simple, it's really simple. So it's definitely worth having some fun, grabbing some brushes, and if you're into space games, you know, it's easy to say that Battlefleet Gothic might be a dead game, but I reckon as long as people are still out there who are loving it and wanting to play it, it's gonna continue. And with the rate at which Games Workshop is releasing these boxed games, who knows, we might see a revitalized version of this at some point. I can hope. <laughs> I can really wish. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, and STL files for printing cool stuff like this, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Jimmy, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old box below. My Twitter and Instagram are linked there too. And if you do upload anything to Instagram that you'd like me to see, make sure you tag me, because I really get a kick out of seeing what people are doing. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.